Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and this month's theme is going to be sustainable sewing. And because of that, today's topic is going to be mending. I'm going to show you how to patch a hole on jeans without using a sewing machine. Now I have a different tutorial that shows you how to do this kind of patching with a sewing machine. But today we're going to be looking at hand sewing options like this or this to fix holes. The first thing you're going to want to do to patch a hole in your jeans is to make sure you have some scrap denim from elsewhere. So I tend to save this from things like if I'm shortening pants a lot or if there's just an old pair that I've made into cutoffs, you can save the bottoms to use as denim for patching. The next thing I like to do is you can either put the patch inside the jeans or you can put it on the outside. And let me show you the difference here. Um, this pair of jeans that I've patched, this patch is on the inside of the jeans. You can see it right here. Whereas this patch over here is on the outside. Now, if I'm going to be putting a patch on, you also want to finish the edges somehow. So one way I do that is I'll go and use my serger to go and overlock around the edges. That's one option. Another option is a blanket stitch, which is what I'm gonna do here. So I have this hole in the pants here. It's kind of high up on the thighs and I'm going to be putting this patch over it. You want your patch to be big enough to cover your hole, but you also want to look at your denim. Like I can see some threadbare areas here and here that I think I need to make sure that my patch at least covers those or gets to those, or else I'm just going to have more rips right around my patch. So using a um, threaded needle, I like to use pearl cotton when I am hand sewing and an embroidery needle and then make sure that your thread is already knotted. And what I'm gonna do is show you how to do a blanket stitch here. So we're gonna come up, and then once I've got it on the right side of the fabric, I can kind of keep it on the right side of the fabric. So I'm going down directly above where I came up and then coming back up next to. And before I pull that thread all the way, I want to take my needle under the loop. Okay, you see what happened there? And then I'm gonna do the same thing again. Uh, next two coming up, I'm gonna go through like under that loop. And you see how that starts to add some stitching that covers and loops around the outside edge of the patch. So you'll just continue around like that to mend on the outside of that patch and make sure that the edges um, of denim, which are very prone to fraying, don't fray so much that it makes your patch worthless. I like to come out at, a cor at the corner here to make sure that I'm going around that corner nicely. And then I'll do another one same hole, but at the side. And so you can see how I've done kind of like a wagon wheel around the corner there. So that's how you do a blanket stitch. Now what I want to show you is how did I do, once I got this patch sewn on, how did I do the designs that are on these jeans? So I've got like crosses, I did X's, and then there's this kind of geometric pattern. I'm going to show you how I do those. Let's start with how to do crosses or X's. Take your thread, knot it, and for the crosses you want to come up from the wrong side and you're just going to make a series of running stitches. Try to make all your stitches the same length, like so. And then once you've got a row that covers your patch, Come back up and do it again. So you'll do several rows across your patches and then you want to switch to going the other way. So I'll come up 
And ta-da, there's crosses. There we go. Now, if you wanted to offset your crosses, let me show you how to do that. Start with your first row of running stitches. And then on your next row, instead of going directly to, in the same spots as your stitches, you're going to want to go in the gaps, like form your stitch across the gap. And sometimes it helps if you mark lines for yourself. I am just eyeballing where I want to go. Okay, once you have your offset rows and you've covered your patch, then that's when you start coming back the opposite way. So you're skipping every other row. And you can see there I've got my crosses there. And then here, I'm going to come back up. And you see how this starts to form the offsetting crosses. Now for the X's, I just did this, but then I did my lines on a diagonal. And that is how I got the X patches here. And then you can see some different, like these are offset crosses here and here. Let me show you one more pattern. I'm gonna show you how to do this geometric pattern. To tie this off on the back side, you want to come back under a previous stitch, and then I like to come back again and wrap your needle a few times through that loop. And you can see since I'm using, as an example here, like very heavy thread and um, thin fabric, how this is all puckering up, that's not as big an issue with denim because of it being thicker. But you do want to kind of like flatten things out before you tie it off. Make sure that you're not adding puckers to it with your stitching. All right, here's how to do that other fun geometric pattern. Okay, you want your first two rows to be exactly the same as each other. And it helps if you imagine your stitches in a square. So you want the length of the stitch to be the same as the distance between your rows. Again, if you're nervous, you can mark this out with a ruler. I like to wing it. Your third row needs to be offset. So on your third row, you want your stitches to be in the gaps of the previous row. And then you go back to the same pattern as your first two rows. I'm gonna do this one more time with the offset row and then I'll show you what happens when you go horizontal. All right, when you go horizontal with this, you're going to be doing the same thing, that you're doing one row that, it, and two rows that are same, and then one offset. So let me show you how that looks. Okay, I want this row to be the same as that one. So I'm going here. Now this next row is going to be offset. So I want my stitching to go here. And you can see how it's starting to form that pattern. So the next row, I want the same as the first two rows. Okay, so you can see row one, row two, same. Row three is different, row four is the same. Row five is going to be the same. Okay, now row six, all those third rows, that's gonna be the opposite. And then go back to doing the same rows. And there we go, you see how it starts to form that pattern and it's literally, you just do two rows of the same and then one of the opposite. 
eventually with that, what you end up with is this. So you can see like this row and that row are the same. This row and this row are the same. And then the one in between them was the opposite row. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on visible mending. And I hope you make use of it to keep your favorite clothes around for longer with some fun embellishment that also serves a useful purpose. For more sustainable sewing ideas, check out the playlist that I've got linked here because I'm going to be doing this all month.